Dear Ksenia, why are we unaware, at least up until a certain point, that we are led by forces? If we knew it from the beginning, we would be much more successful in dealing with provocations and our overall development would be much faster as well. Is this an error of the system or is it meant to be this way? How can one discern the system's provocations from the signs of the surrounding environment? So this question, as you already understand, it's a natural follow-up to the previous question. This point of view is valid as well. Why is a person, up to a certain point, unaware that she is led by forces? First of all, no one has told her, meaning that none of us receive any instructions from birth. And who can hand out this sort of instruction? Usually only the ones who are living, usually one's own parents. If parents knew that there is a certain force standing behind them, they would pass this information on to their offspring. But where are these families? This is common only in old aristocratic families, the ones that track their bloodlines all the way from antiquity and possibly trace their ancestral origins all the way from the old gods. The rest don't do that. The ancient sorcerer family clans also preserve this memory, and they are actually aristocrats as well, only of a different kind of world, not of the societal one. The rest of the people do not receive this knowledge, and this means that a person must live a certain kind of life, build up a certain worldview, which will allow her not only to swim with the current, but also to reflect the surrounding environment. And so when this reflection goes beyond perceiving oneself as the crown jewel of creation, that is, when the comparison of the cause and effect factors between oneself and the world takes place, between the events of one's life and the events in the life of another person. The worldview starts changing from being flat, binary, to acquiring certain characteristics of a quantum-like mind. And that is when a slightly different pattern begins to form. And so these new patterns demand answers, and the answers come. Evidently, my life has somewhat different fate-building algorithm than that of my neighbor, for example. Then a comparison occurs. What about my parents? Do they have the same algorithm or not? And what about my children? Do they have it or not? Or is it just me? Could someone else in this world have this algorithm? So a person begins to discover the world around them, through history, literature, trying to decipher the algorithm. Maybe it is already written somewhere? Is it already described? Perhaps in someone else's fate and then marked as a historical fact? And so that is when the understanding comes. So perhaps there is a certain something leading me. Now, the next logical question arises. Why haven't I been told about it? I wouldn't have wasted the time, I could have done so much more. And it is in fact a good question. First of all, who should be telling you? If there is no bloodline memory, no family legend, how can one know? We already know how it is with Christianity. Snip on one side, snip on the other, and then, as it is depicted on the 21st Arcana, for everyone who remembers the picture, if not, look it up on the internet. Some unattached creature hanging in the clouds. Where will the memory come from? It can't. Forces are not obligated to inform you about themselves, especially if you are undertaking a journey in this reality in order to gain a certain specific individual experience. You are not abandoned in terms of their attention, but you are also not going to be born with instructions in hand. You 
So it is through understanding, through comprehension, through information gathered from the reality around you, through the solving of riddles, through personal quests, that we begin to approach a thought that all of this is possibly not at all accidental. Is it a mistake of the system? What system? If it's the one that cut you off from the memory, then no, that was no mistake at all. But a deliberate algorithm aimed to deprive your consciousness of the ability to take part in the reality's construction rules that are created by this very system. To this system we are unnecessary. But since you were born and were allowed to continue growing, this system will keep its taps on you so that you don't become a disturbance. But people do possess the power of a free will, and nobody can deprive them of the right to explore this world. That which they see with their eyes, hear with their ears and feel with their bodies. If all of these senses function well, how can it be interfered with? Only by redirecting the attention onto something else. By convincing them that they are the center of the world and everyone else is just dust on the ground, something peripheral, not worth one's attention, and that the attention should be paid only to one's own feelings, but not to the way that these feelings are forming the reality. No, no need to pay attention to that. And so that is how one's power diminishes, little by little. It stops creating the connections of cause and effect, such as I thought it happened, I decided it came to be, I said so it cancelled itself out. Such algorithms won't even form in an inattentive consciousness. It just won't be able to notice it. And that, of course, is an accomplishment of the system, just not the one that supports you, but the one that currently stands victorious over all other systems. And for the last 2000 years it has been known by the name of Abrahamic system. And it has absolutely no need for your pagan forces. However, if you happen to be a conduit of the will of some sort of a martyr, holy saint, then you of course would have been treated slightly differently, and your fate would be forming a bit differently as well. But if you are a conduit of some dark force, a pagan force, or a force related to the ancient pantheons, then why should anyone be helping you? If you happen to remember this force, if you become fully aware of this force as a part of yourself, you would be a potential enemy. No one is interested in it besides you alone. Therefore, no one is in a hurry to help you. How can you tell provocations of the system from the signs of the world around you? only by acquiring experience, the skill of discerning one from the other. And this develops by the capturing, registering of the cause and effect connections. I said it, it happened, I thought of it, it came about. And then what sort of other consequences that followed? You just have to pay attention to the world around you. If you remember that in this quest, there won't be any helpers, and that in this game of aspirations you are more likely to meet opponents rather than associates, then you won't be under any illusions that the magnificent universe will be helping you. Hell no, it won't be helping you. In this world, everybody is on their own.